Hey guys! <laughs> Remember a few months ago when I said this? Another very common question. Babies, babies, babies. When we popping on another baby? I don't know about babies, especially now. No, definitely yeah, yeah. not now. Future oh, for sure. Yeah, I think we definitely do want to have more children. No, for sure, yeah. I think just not right now because of Corona. Sure. If it wasn't a perfect world without Corona, I would want to start having another baby already. Well, surprise. That was all bullshit and I'm pregnant. That is right, I am pregnant with my second child. It honestly feels very bizarre to say that out loud or just to be pregnant in general. I knew that I wanted to have another child. I'm gonna get into a few things in this video, but like I knew I wanted to have another child and obviously we did plan for this child. But when I read the positive pregnancy test, I was almost as shocked as when I was pregnant with Noah, which is bizarre because we're in very different places than when I was pregnant with Noah. But okay, let's have a little chit chat, shall we? It's been a minute. I don't know how many of you guys on this channel follow me on my beauty channel, but I was posting regularly for a hot minute there, a hot minute for me, you know, for other YouTubers, it's just a regular month. But for me, I was like, wow, I'm doing amazing. And I was having so much fun filming. But when I found out I was pregnant, I had to stop because I talk so much shit in those videos. I literally just sit, talk shit and put on makeup. So I blab a lot and I knew, I knew I was gonna let it slip. I knew it. So I literally seized all operations of filming. So I'm really happy to be back and filming. I'm the worst at keeping my own secrets. Like if I have something exciting, to say, I just say it. When I bought Nassim's Christmas present this year, like I literally pressed purchase, ran downstairs and I looked at him and I was like, I got you something. So therefore I just had to stop talking until I wanted to come out and let you guys know that I'm pregnant. I am still early on in my pregnancy. When you guys are watching this, I'm nine and a half, maybe 10 weeks, depending on when, <laughs> when I get this up. That's still early in the pregnancy, but I did want to share it with you guys because I'm excited. And I honestly tell you guys everything. I know that I don't post as much as probably we would both want me to post, but you guys really do know everything about my life, like all the important factors about my son or my husband or me or my life, like you guys already know it. And so I just, I couldn't wait. This was like the first thing I wanted to do as maybe pathetic as that sounds. I wanted to tell you guys, I wanted to let you know that I'm having another baby. And let me, let me backtrack it a second there. Obviously in the video a few months ago that I filmed with Nassim, we said that we definitely wanted to wait because of the virus and everything going on right now. And clearly not much has changed since then. Like in regards to how things are going in the world right now. So you may be wondering like, what the fuck, <laughs> what changed your mind? And it was honestly a lot of things combined that led us to the decision. And I don't necessarily feel like I have to sit here and like tell you exactly why we wanted to have another kid, but it just boiled down to a few important factors to us. We really have been wanting to, far before this pandemic started, we wanted to add on to our family. We did want Noah to have a sibling. We made the decision that we didn't want him to be an only child if we had a choice in it. But then a few things started happening. We were unhappy in California. We realized it was not, I mean, I've told you guys this, we realized it just wasn't built for our family, like we just felt really, I guess, out of place there. I don't really know, but we just didn't feel like that was the place we wanted to grow our family in. So then that put a stop to everything. Then the pandemic hit, then we moved to Georgia, then we were just adjusting in general. You know, we wanted to find Noah a good therapist and a lot of things happened in these past months that we've lived here. It's been a lot of adjustment as is for everyone else. Like everyone's fucking going through it. It's 2020, okay? And it happened slowly but surely. And we are finally in a place where we feel good at the moment obviously like within our own home right like we feel comfortable and we feel like things are going well here in our home but the second you leave your house you you get smacked in the face with what's going on but things in our personal life have changed for instance noah i need to do a whole update on noah i feel really guilty that i haven't done that he turned three in august what the fuck he is literally a grown adult who is that never seen him before but he's so like grown up now i mean he's still tiny i have moments of feeling like he's so tiny and then like he's so big i don't know parenting is weird but we got him in with a therapist and it has been absolutely amazing he can count to seven now he like communicates with us he will randomly repeat a word like perfectly after i say it which just never happened before i feel like there's like a whole part of his brain or something that's like open that wasn't open like it's just it's been an amazing thing to see so him excelling led us to feel comfortable having another child i don't know if that sounds weird but when your child is struggling and just kind of stuck in a certain spot whether it's developmentally or 
in their behaviors or whatever it may be. You just want to focus on them. You just want to give all your attention and your love to them and help them, you know, move past whatever it is they're going through. So that's where we were for a while there with Noah. And honestly, as we saw him excel and just his behaviors and everything, we were like, wow, okay, maybe we can really do this. I am due July 10th, having a cancer. We planned that, okay? Make fun of me all you want. <laughs> I have three Leos in this house and it wasn't gonna happen again. We just thought a cancer would be a nice little addition to our house, okay? <laughs> that sounds really fucking stupid <laughs> saying it out loud. That was another kind of like decision-making factor where we were like, okay, by the time I give birth, Noah's gonna be turning four. And I have four brothers, I don't know how many, of you know that i have three older brothers and one younger brother and although i'm close to all my brothers in a different way i'm like so beyond close to the brother that's really close in age to me although we're like a year and a half apart my mom had us like back to back i was I was a whoopsie, but we always knew that we didn't want them to be like eight years apart or anything like that. Four years for me is already like a really big age difference. And I'm like, oh my God, but we didn't want to do this any sooner. I'm really happy that we kind of took our time with just enjoying Noah and giving him his time to be an only child. I have no idea how he's gonna react to being a big brother. He does great around children. I mean, he's a Leo, okay? The kid literally gets out of the shower, I hold him while he looks in the mirror, wings at himself, and blows himself kisses, all right? I don't know how he's gonna react to a new baby in the house. But anyway, moving on to the actual pregnancy and how I'm feeling, I'm feeling wonderful. I'm having a very different pregnancy experience than I had with Noah. With Noah, I was very, very sick and tired for the first 12 weeks, probably longer than that. I never felt like since the moment I got pregnant with Noah that my body was my own body. I know that sounds pretty dumb, but like when you're pregnant and you're feeling sick all the time or you just feel uncomfortable all the time for nine months, you start losing your reality. You're like, what did I used to feel like when I wasn't pregnant? That's how I felt the entire time. I feel like I talked about that in my pregnancy updates and I am not feeling that way at all. I felt a little bit nauseous, I would say at like seven weeks. I started feeling like when I would smell coffee or certain things, I was like, ugh, disgusting. And now I'll have like tiny waves of nausea if I eat too much of one food or if I'm just, I don't know, eating something and then I decide I don't like it halfway through. But other than that, I feel amazing. I feel so amazing that I got scared. Like a couple days ago, I was just sitting in bed and I'm like, oh shit, I don't know. I don't feel pregnant. Like this is weird. I know I'm pregnant. I know the baby's there. We just checked the heartbeat. I know that everything's fine, but like I don't feel pregnant at all. So I started worrying myself that something was going wrong because it's really fun up here. So I went to go get checked and the baby was fine. The baby was like, don't worry about me. And so I guess I'm just experiencing a much easier pregnancy. I don't want to jinx it. Okay. Things could get harder, but I do feel really, really great. There's only one more thing I wanna talk about, and I'm gonna make more videos on my pregnancy updates, and not just updates, I wanna make more videos in general that, you know, talk about my pregnancy, because I am so happy that I have all of that with Noah, like all of my pregnancy updates with Noah. There's so much that you forget after you give birth, and you know, throughout the years, you just you lose that memory of the little, you know, details of your pregnancy. And I love that I posted videos on that and that I can look back on, but I also wanna post other content too. My whole point is just that, you know, pregnancy related videos and whatnot will be coming soon. However, there's one last thing that I wanna talk about that's kind of exciting, kind of scary. And I debated on whether or not I wanted to talk about this just because, you know, it's hard sometimes when you share certain things on the internet, people gather certain expectations of a situation. And then if things turn out differently, then other people have opinions on it. And so it's a tricky thing to talk about things like this on the internet. But anyway, point is, I am going to be trying for a VBAC during this birth. And if you don't know, a VBAC is a vaginal birth after cesarean, which means that even though you had a C-section and some people have the preconceived notion of like, once you have a C-section, then you just have to have a C-section every single time. I had that thought after I had Noah, I was like, well, I guess that's it. If you've watched my C-section birth story, you know what a negative experience my C-section was and the recovery was horrendous and it was just a lot. And I'm not gonna lie, that's actually been a contributing factor to why me and Asim were really scared to get pregnant again. Although Noah came out perfectly fine and we're very grateful for that. It was it was traumatic enough for me and Nassim to be very, very scared. And I knew about VBACs, but I had perceived them as like, oh, that's something you can't do because it's like so dangerous and most women can't do it. And I'm very, very lucky to have found an amazing doctor here in Georgia. She's very wonderful. She's very supportive and realistic and helpful. And she doesn't just 
come in the room after two hours of waiting and then see you for two minutes and leave. Like she is very, very attentive. She wants to just sit there and talk to you and really get involved. And she did not pressure me into anything. She just literally asked me like, oh, so what are your expectations for the birth and stuff like that? Like she didn't even mention the word VBAC. And I had already done some research on VBACs and stuff. So I was just like, um, I don't know. I had read about VBACs and I thought that maybe I'm not sure if it's too dangerous. And I was like being really, really timid. And she basically told me, why don't we do this? Why don't I gather all the information from your C-section and your doctor? and your entire pregnancy and then I will analyze that and decide from that whether you're a good candidate for a VBAC because there's certain things that can make you not a great candidate for a VBAC. If you're wondering what one of the major risks of a VBAC is, it's uterine rupture and it's just as bad as it sounds. I never thought my channel would turn into this, honestly. <laughs> it's so bizarre that I'm talking about uterine rupture. If you would have told 2015 Jessie this, she would have punched you in the face and taken a shot. Basically, when you get a C-section, they cut into like a million layers of you, and one of those layers is your uterus. And that means that they sew you back up or do whatever the hell they do to close that wound and you get some scar tissue there. And when you have scar tissue, it weakens that area. So the baby grows, your uterus grows, everything expands. And during birth, there is a tiny chance that that scar opens up, your uterus opens, you bleed to death, the baby would not survive most of the time. Sometimes they do and sometimes you can survive it too, but it's a very high risk situation. I mean, it's scary as fuck, right? Like what the fuck? Why would I ever want to do this? But one reason why I love my doctor, she's very realistic. So it's not like she was like, yeah, you're going to do a VBAC and it's going to be amazing. She literally told me like, listen, let's shoot for that. But the first priority is you and the baby. So we will monitor you very closely and they do monitor you super closely when you have a VBAC and you're going into labor. But she let me know like if it doesn't happen, Happen for any reason I just don't want you to be discouraged let's shoot for it and best case scenario you're gonna have a healthy birth vaginally and if not then you're gonna have a healthy baby and another c-section so she really set it up in a way that she's very enthusiastic about the VBAC like she's not like oh I guess we could try no she's like we can I think we can do it like she's very encouraging but also wanted to be realistic and I appreciate that even though I told her I was like well I expected that I would just have to have a c-section so honestly if there's a chance I'm excited about that possibility it would be an insane experience to have a baby vaginally. I just, I've always wanted to know what it's like, you know, because I never got to do it. But at the same time, I'm happy as long as me and the baby are healthy. So to me, it does matter in the sense that I'm like, oh, I definitely want to have like a positive mindset and think that I can do this and, you know, not enter the last trimester being as stressed out as I was with Noah, just wanting the baby to get out of there. I want to like feel a lot more positive about this pregnancy or at least try to. But I did just want to share that with you guys because like I said, I share everything with you guys. I feel like I just tell you everything. So I do want to mention that that's what I'm hoping to happen with this baby. But obviously I'll keep you updated and whatever ends up happening, you'll know. And that's about it. I think I have rambled enough. I'm going to be doing Q and A's, updates. I want to show you guys. Last time I didn't even show you like his little nursery setup or anything or do hauls like baby hauls I feel like why didn't I do any of that it was probably because I was so like crazy with second guessing my content back then and now I'm just like fuck it it is what it is <laughs> so let's just put it all out there I want to have this shit to look back on so if you guys have any other ideas of content you want to see surrounding my pregnancy or not surrounding my pregnancy do you want more cooking videos do you want what do you want what do you want to see I am excited to make content while you guys now know that I'm pregnant I don't have to hide anything. I swear, I just felt like I needed to disappear from the world. I haven't even tweeted in like a month because I just felt like I was gonna spill the beans and I probably would have. But yeah, now you guys know July, 2021, there's gonna be another little baby in this family. It's an exciting time. And honestly, I'm thrilled to have something to look forward to. It's just been a tough time. And for me, Growing my family is an exciting thing. I love being a mom. Nassim loves being a dad. We're great parents together, honestly. And we're excited to enter this next chapter of life, which is probably gonna be fucking insane. <laughs> it's probably gonna be so much crazier than I can even imagine right now, but I'm excited. Oh, and I didn't even show you guys. This is a picture of the baby, which is funny because it looks literally like a gummy bear. Like the hands aren't completely formed yet. This was taken at eight weeks, two days or something like that. And the hands and the feet aren't formed. So it literally looks like a gummy bear with a giant head. And I know 99.9% .9 of the people looking at this are like, that looks like an alien. Honestly, I have to say though, for an eight week ultrasound, this is like super, super detailed. I was completely floored. With Noah, you couldn't really see much. It just looked like a little peanut floating there. And with this baby, it's like looking straight at you. You like see the cheeks and shit. 
Isn't that weird? Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now. Uh, I love you guys very much. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for always being so amazing and caring about me and my family and my life. Some of you guys really give a shit and you show me and you message me and you help me and you give me advice and I cannot thank you enough for that. So thank you so much. I am so excited to share this journey with you. I love you so, so, so much and I will see you very soon. Bye.